What's going on YouTube? Pirate Tycoon. I know it's been a minute. There's a lot of stuff I need to cover, so I'm going to try to cover as many topics kind of as quickly as possible. Uh, I have no idea what the title of this video is going to be because I don't know exactly what I'm going to touch on. But, let's go ahead and get it done. Alright, first up, uh, first thing I want to talk about is a 3DS XL. At first, when I heard about 3DS XL, you know, you're kind of like, eh, I don't know, I already have my 3DS. It's not really worth upgrading because you're expecting kind of like the DSi XL where all they did was make the screens bigger. But the more I read about the 3DS XL, the more I see it, it's kind of like this is not a significant, significant improvement, but it's it's got enough improvements to kind of make you question whether or not you want to get it. Um, the more I see it, the more I read about it, the more I more I'm interested in it, um, you know, besides the bigger screens, it's still fairly thin, it's about the same thickness as the 3DS, um, it doesn't have the glossy finish so you don't get your fingerprints all over that shit. Uh, you got the 3D sliders kind of like a more clicky kind of to it so it doesn't like accidentally slide around when you're playing a game. You got the glare resistant screens, better battery, um, there's definitely enough improvements to kind of sit there and be like, okay, do I want it? Do I not want it? It's not just a straight flat out no as far as, um, well, at least in my book. So I'll think about it. I'm definitely not going to get it at launch. I'll probably wait a while, see how it goes. Maybe, uh, uh, uh probably next year. I'm probably not even going to get one this year. I got so much other stuff I need to worry about. Um, 3DS XL is kind of at the bottom of my list, but, um, uh, I'm definitely considering it. Okay, next topic is Namco Bandai helping Nintendo develop the next Super Smash Bros. They're not flat out developing it, they're helping Nintendo develop it, trying to kind of get it sped up, get it out a bit faster. And this is awesome news. Awesome, awesome news. I don't, a lot of haters going around about this. Oh, Namco Bandai is going to fuck it up, blah, blah, blah. Namco Bandai puts out some pretty kick ass games. You know, they put out the fucking Tekken games. They put out Soul Calibur, they put out Tails games, and everyone knows I fucking love Tails games. Like, if you go back and watch the Smash Bros. video I made, the characters I want to see in it, the last bit there was like some Tails characters in there, and I said that the translation from a Tails game, as far as the fighting system is concerned, to a Smash Bros. game is very minimal. These characters are kind of already kind of built with their movesets. Um, go play Tales Symphonia, play Tales of Vesperia. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, this is very exciting news, and hopefully this means we might even get a Tales character in there. Um, who knows? But yeah, no matter how I look at it, Namco Bandai helping Nintendo develop the next Smash Bros. is a good thing. All right, guys, the next topic is the Ouya, the Android console, coming out $99. Um, I'm not gonna get into details about the specs or anything, but they're fairly good for what you're getting for 99 bucks uh, you get uh, you know the, the problem is with the actual system itself is I say the 8 gigs of storage space and the one USB port uh, I think that's kind of limiting but a hundred bucks it's not really it's a hundred bucks come on and every console comes with the SDK kit, so there's definitely going to be a lot of indie games all up on this console. Uh, and they say that everything has to have some form of free-to-play. So that'll definitely, you know, in, either in the form of demos or just microtransactions and games, there's definitely going to be a lot of games out there. Uh, everything has to be somewhat free-to-play. Uh, but the thing is, because it's going to be so open source, it's pretty much going to be open to everyone, that leaves room for hacking lots of hacking. Uh, so kind of like what Shokyo said, I don't think the online competitive multiplayer community is really going to be existing on this console. I think you'll see a lot more single player games, maybe online co-op flourish on this console, but as far as competitive multiplayer, I don't really see it happening with this. But it's still a very interesting concept. Uh, the controller, it's kind of like your traditional controller, except in the middle. It's kind of like the Wii U, but not. It's got a, uh, what do they say, like a three inch touch pad. So it's, instead of a touch screen, it's a touch pad, kind of for easy porting for, you know, the actual games already on the Android market. But uh, this is definitely interesting. Uh, kind of came out of nowhere. It's definitely got already got a lot of support. The Kickstarter event for it 
it only asked to raise like a million dollars over the course of like a month or so and it got that much in the first day i think right now it's like three four million or whatever the hell it is it's got a lot of support either a lot of support from a lot of people or a lot of support from a few people with a lot of money no matter how you look at it this is an this is something people want i'm not saying you guys want in particular but i'm saying this is an idea people are basically embracing so comes out march next year Ooh, yeah. I, I don't really know how I feel about it, but it is what it is. Okay, next up we have a rumor that says Final Fantasy Versus 13 might be canceled. Uh, it's still a rumor, but it seems like it has some truth behind it. Square Enix has been pretty quiet about it lately. It's never really been out in the open like that, and it seems like it would die kind of like a quiet death. Now, this is a game that got announced a long ass time ago, six years ago, kind of like alongside the, what do they call it, the Final Fantasy Fabulous Nova Chrysalis series or whatever the fuck it is. Basically it got announced with 13 and uh, a Ge at the time it was called Agito, which is going to be called Type Zero, basically. I haven't heard much about that a game either, but uh, basically it's going to be part of this, you know, Final Fantasy 13 universe. 13 was a flagship title, it was going to come out first, then Versus 13. And now it's looking like Versus 13 might not ever come out at all. It's been about six years. We've seen practically little, very little progress on the actual game development as it already was. And now there's rumors saying it's going to be canceled. It seems pretty true. Now, I think it's... I'm going off the rest of this assuming it's true. It, I think it's pretty fucked up, pretty much. You know, so six years ago, it's a game that looked interesting, intriguing. It had my attention more than 13. I was looking forward to this game more than 13. I know I'm not alone here either. Uh, a lot of people were looking forward to this. It was an action RPG, or, or at least more so than 13 was. And just looked, it was a darker setting. It kind of had, it reminded you of 7 in a bit. And it just looks, it looked awesome. So I was looking forward to that. Uh, but as soon as they announced it, I was like, yes. 13 needs to hurry up and come out, so they come out with Versus 13. So it came out with 13, and what do they do? They come out with 13 too. A game no one asked for, a game no one wanted, and they came out with 13 too, and I'm like, where the fuck is my Versus 13? And then after 13 2 came out, you know, they kind of leave it open for 13 3, and it. Versus 13 is nowhere to be seen. So it's retarded. As far as I'm concerned, the Final Fantasy franchise is like complete. It's going downhill extremely fast. I'm not saying Square Enix is done. I'm just saying Final Fantasy is pretty much over at this point. Okay, and the last topic I want to cover is Dark Knight Rises. Awesome movie. Go see it. I saw it last night. It is pretty cool. A couple things that they kind of messed up in there, but that's okay. It's still a great movie. And I kind of want to talk about the shooting for a bit. It's pretty fucked up. Like... I have no idea what compels someone to do such a thing to where they just randomly bust in a movie theater, you know, smoke gas, open a fire on people that, th these aren't, you know, drug lords, you know, these aren't criminals, convicts, murderers, rapists, these are just people going out to see a movie just to have a good time. and. For some reason, I, I, like I said, I don't get it. What compels someone to just bust in a movie theater and kill people that are just trying to live their normal lives, enjoy a movie? And, you know, it's pretty fucking crazy. Um, obviously, the theater was jam-packed. It was a midnight release. So the guy busts in, open fires, hits a lot of people, obviously, because it's a packed theater. And it's just totally crazy that that shit happened. Um, a lot of people... There was 12 people killed, a lot of people ended up being injured, and I think the youngest injury was like a three-month-old baby. Like, that's insane, man. That is insane that a three-month-old baby got injured, and it's also insane that the three-month-old baby was there in the fucking first place. Like, I don't know who brings their three-month-old baby into the midnight release of a movie. I don't know what compels someone to do that either. But the more important thing is the, the baby was injured. It's okay. Um, like I said, it shouldn't have been there in the first place. But at the same time, no one's going to the movie theater expecting to be shot at either. Uh, so there's that. 
um, there's a lot of kids that ended up getting hurt. Like, I think they said uh, the youngest kid's still in the hospital now. It's like six years old or something. There were like a lot of kids, a lot of people in critical condition. And that's just totally batshit crazy. And a lot of people, Warner Brothers, Christopher Nolan has, um, you know, sent out his thoughts on this. Um, basically letting everyone know, you know, out of respect for all this, we're not releasing the box office numbers until Monday. My thoughts go out to all the families, all this good stuff. Uh, Christopher Nolan, he's definitely a cool guy. And there's a picture, a couple pictures going around Facebook. I'll be sure to share them again. But it's basically trying to get Christian Bale to visit these kids at the hospital to be kind of like a real life hero instead of just another celebrity movie star. Um, visit these kids in the hospital that went to see his movie and got hurt doing so. Uh, I think that'd be a great thing. So if you find these pictures on Facebook, please share them. Hopefully the guy goes, visits these kids that got shot trying to see his movie. All right, uh, I think that's about everything I want to cover. Uh, I'm gonna have to make another video. Power talking. This video is long.